The next feature we'd like to tease from Vectorworks 2019 is known as 2D components for hybrid objects. Now, you might say 2D objects as a component already exists for hybrid objects, but what we mean is this. Currently in 2018 and older versions of Vectorworks, you have a 3D portion of a symbol or a plugin, and you have the 2D portion, and they'll display dependent on which view you're using. What we've done in 2019 is expanded that. You can now do a 2D view for the top, bottom, front, back, left, and right sides of any object in Vectorworks. That's either a component of a symbol or a plugin object. Not to stop there, we went a little bit further, and this may make it into 2019, it may not, but it is intended and planned. We have the front and back cut plane, top and bottom cut plane, and left and right cut plane for when the object has been sectioned. This also integrates another set of options, which we'll cover a little bit in just a moment. What I want to show you first is how the tool actually works. So for instance, here we have a number of chairs. And in these chairs, in the top views, the top views are all the same. So no matter what rotation we have them set to, they'll get the top representation of that view. You can see that they're in top view now. These are in 2D. This is 2D geometry. It's in black. The 3D geometry we left in green to make it obvious when the viewport's showing the green geometry. Now, for these two other chairs here, these are tilted at an angle. These are 45 degrees. So we'll only be able to modify the ones facing oblique to the screen. And here's the model itself. So now, for instance, what if we want to edit these? And these are just duplicates of the same symbol. There's no difference between these. We'll go ahead and we'll edit the two components here. And it's going to bring us into this special editing mode that has its own edit dialog that lets us control it. So here we can see that we're seeing this is what I, we expect when we open a regular hybrid symbol. We edited the 2D component and we have the top plan view here. However, we can show other views. We don't need to just show the top plan. Now by default, there is no bottom and there will be no front or back or left or right. So for instance, we'll just clear this out. What if we wanted to create this front view? What if we didn't have that library? Currently, we're not showing anything else. We're only showing what's inside this symbol as we edit it. But we can now show the reference geometry, and it is snappable, so we'll be able to snap right to it. So if we wanted to, we could take the tools, and we can go through, and we could trace this out and create our 2D components. However, that could take a little while. So we've also added another option. And now, you can always add whatever components you want in that view. But you can also choose Generate 2D from 3D Component, and Vectorworks, usually you'll use hidden line for this, will attempt to make a 2D view for you. And it does a fairly good job. You can go in and edit it however you like if you want to clean up some of the lines down here. You can modify this and take away a little bit of these extras. They don't necessarily need to be here. You can tune it whatever you want. You can add different bits. There's any number of things you can change here, but this generates an automatic one from the 3D for you. It attempts to do basically a convert to polygons first so that you don't have to back out and mess with a whole bunch of different editing modes. And now if we exit this group, this is now our 2D component for the front view. And if we exit that symbol, if we look at this viewport in a front view, we'll go ahead and update this viewport now. And we want to display the 2D component. So this is what it was showing before. And this is how viewports that were made in older versions will display by default. But we want to display the 2D components of the symbols here. Go ahead and update this. And we can see here, our 2D component now shows. We didn't add a left or a right, so we don't have any left or right here. They're not going to show. That's the basis of it. Uh, another quick note is that uh, oftentimes the front and the back might be different, but the left and the right would very often, especially for things like a chair, be the same. So if we go back to the model itself and we edit one of these chairs, edit 2D components, if we want to go to the front or the sides, I'm sorry, we want to go to the left, And if we have a symbol generated here, got that geometry, we'll go ahead and just allow that to be shown on the right. We'll exit the symbol, and then we'll go back to the top, or we'll go back to, I'm sorry, we want the front view. We'll update this. So even though we just edited the left, by default, it will mirror that left since we gave it no left content, and it will put that on the other side as well. It will simply mirror whatever geometry you did on the left or on the right. Now, you can make those individually different if you want, but this just saves you time. You don't have to build a separate one. The second part of this that we'll get into very quickly, and we're not even going through all the detail options, we're just going to go through a few things, um, is things called level of detail. 
So the problem in older versions of Vectorworks was that you would have your hybrid symbols, but there would just be one hybrid. So this is how the symbol would look. And if you changed and used a different scale, that same symbol would appear. And that same symbol would appear down here. That's a little fussy and busy for this sort of thing. For instance, this window that's sliced here, there's not enough detail. This isn't a full window detail. This one's fine, but then here, this shouldn't be so busy. It should really just be a straight line. So we don't want to have to make a different symbol for every single view. We want one symbol to be able to handle that instead. And so we want this instead. So if we go to view the interior components, this is in 2019, we now see that we have the same symbols, but they reduce in complexity as you get smaller. So we can go here and you can see that the elevation, they have pretty much the 3D generated clean 2D views. And you can see I have a very heavy duty wall detail going on here. All the intricacies of the window are included. They're not included in this middle one. And we have a slightly simpler, but still pretty similar for the medium scale. And then for this very small simple scale, a simple line for the window, very clean lines for all this other geometry that we don't need all that detail since we're going to be looking at it in this view anyway. Uh, you don't necessarily need to obey the rules entirely for um, what's being shown at the various different scales. Uh, but we can do this a little automatically in the design layer as well. In previous versions, we had an option where it would hide the details when a layer scale was greater than or equal to 96 or whatever you wanted to set it to. We now have two of those. The low will be shown if it's less than this value. The medium will be shown if it's between these two values. And the high will be shown if it's above this value. So if you actively change your layer scale, the detail will update to show you that detail component one at a time. Now, for instance, this object, we can go in and we can edit the 2D components of it. We can see the top plan. We're currently showing the detail for everything. But we can show it as high, which will be everything. We can show medium, which will show less detail. We can choose what we want to include here. And then for low, it'll show low. So for instance, we can go back to high. And the way we control this is this. Anytime we click on one of these polygons or one of these objects, it's going to say display at detail level, low, medium, or high. It won't say this all the time for all polygons, just when you're editing in one of these viewport views like we are right now, where we're editing this symbol that's a component. So we could say, I don't want this lid to show in medium or low. And if we exit this symbol, we now see that it won't show, even though it's showing the high detail for the rest of the objects. So now we can see the same will actually work in 3D. So the level of detail system isn't tied just to the 2D components. It works in 3D as well. So if we change this active layer scale, let me change this so we go up above 48 here. Let's see. By default, it's going to show us a different level of detail. If we go even further, we can now see we have a different level of detail. And we've switched from a toilet to a single bucket. Now, this will change. It's not actually changing the symbol itself. It's just change, changing which component of that symbol is being displayed. So I can now double click this viewport. Or I'm sorry, double click this symbol, edit the 3D component. And when I'm in this editing mode, you can see I see all the geometry. And I can choose whether I want to see the low geometry only, the medium geometry, or the high geometry. Now for this one, since I had something unusual, the little bucket instead of the toilet, if I go to all, it makes a bit of a mess and I see everything. But you have the same options here. You can choose whether you want to show them in medium or low or which options you want them to appear in. Viewports will also have this as well. So if you go and select a viewport, this is a default of the, um, the, the active layer scale, which can be controlled in the document settings, document preferences. I can choose if I want to automatically display the level detail levels for all design layers. Now, if I uncheck this, it will always show uh, all objects. So for this instance that I've set up, that would be incorrect. So I can set it up so that it only shows the, um, uh, it'll only show this and I can set it up so that it won't show that low detail object at all unless I change the scale of the design layer. Not only that, but you can do different views. You can show what's in 3D with some 2D added. You can show different objects at different states of section. And there's a lot built into this tool. This is way more complex than you might normally expect out of a 1.0 feature. We basically made sure that this feature was on its 2 or 2.0, 2.5 set feature set, and then we released it to you this time. And again, there's a lot more that goes into this feature, but this is a good summary of the basics of it, and questions are welcome. Thank you.